the men on the cover of this book arranged to have President Abraham Lincoln removed from office using assassination. These very same men also investigated his murder and conducted the conspiracy trial, covering up their involvement in the plot to kill the president. Mainstream historians still claim their involvement is only a conspiracy theory and will always be nothing more than an unsolved mystery. My purpose is not to argue whether those men plotted Lincoln's murder, but to reveal their involvement in cover-up was uncovered by the FBI in 1977. The diary at that time in 1977 was so delicate, they couldn't let it out to anybody anymore. So they said, look, we want to make a thorough examination of this and then any researchers uh, looking into the diary, uh, they'll have to go by the report. Uh, the diary is being closed off to the public forever. It'll never be available for analysis again. And that's all in my report. I explained the whole thing and I got the documents to it. The FBI found that the pages Booth wrote were in fact removed from the diary after Booth was dead and while the book was in possession of the government. When Congress first reviewed the book, 27 consecutive sheets had been cut out of the diary. However, only 25 of the 27 cut out sheet stubs were visible. The FBI report found that the last two missing cut out sheets were in the book when Booth wrote his confession. The exam also found that all of Booth's original pages had been taken out of the book. Duplicate pages were rewritten with two replacement sheets glued onto the two hidden stubs. Then everything was rebound before Congress could examine Booth's confession. The last two stubs were not visible because the last single sheet of the packet had been cut in half and the separated halves were glued onto the two hidden stubs, changing their original location in the book. The report proved that the pages had been written twice because impressions from Booth's last written page, page 61, can be seen on the two pages underneath. However, impressions from page 61 were also found on page 57, 58, and 59. There's no way in the world that Booth could have written this last page and left impressions on the two pages underneath it and three pages in front of it. That proved that the pages had been written twice. I mean, I've, I've discovered this thing, and, and this is just a microcosm of what I've got. Uh, I've got uh, a manuscript now that is bigger than this book that spans this story way beyond what I've just told you. I would like to get with a, uh, a publishing company and show them the story that I have and the documentation that I've got. I've collected a library full of stuff that's just out there that nobody has ever looked at or picked up. I would like to see this on the History Channel and say this is a discovery, because it is. I would like to, for them to take my uh, FBI essay and say, this is what they found. And Don Thomas is the first one to, to say it. That's what I want. I, I want to get credit for this because people are stealing this from me now. There are already two copycat books about this, and they're, they're trying to distort it. And that's one thing that these people did to hide this thing. They would. They, they're the ones who, who do all the conspiracy theories, the wild stories and stuff, and they do that just to dilute the whole story and make everybody think, but well, oh, it's just conspiracy. And that's kind of the way my book has been taken. I mean, 16,000 books, they figure somebody's probably got it right by now. You know, what are you doing? And uh, everything that I've got is brand new. It's a whole new story to a I've seen all the conspiracy theories about the mummy and, uh, and all those things sound so real, but uh, when you do the research on these, there's, there's nothing. There's, there's all this. So it's like Neff. Uh, Bill O'Reilly used him in, in uh, the, the diary by Luther Baker, I mean, uh, Lafayette Baker's uh, wife and the, the lock of hair and the splinter in his arm and, I, and all that stuff. I couldn't find any evidence to substantiate that at all. Those are conspiracy theories put out there that sound really good and interesting and catch people's eye, but they, they're smoke screens uh, to hide this truth, this real truth right here. And this cannot be hidden. 
And there's nobody that can come here and say, well, no, that's not true. It's right here. It's right here. It's right in the National Archives. These are the documents. These are the actual images, the handwritten letters. Uh, you can't take that back. You can't stop that. This, this stuff is out there. So this is what I made my book from. I wanted the Virginia Historical Society to, to make a statement. It's been proven that Richmond, Virginia had absolutely nothing to do with this assassination whatsoever. And look at what we are accused of. But nobody admits it. Even the authors today, contemporary authors, still blame Richmond for the conspiracy to kill Lincoln. And uh, they had absolutely nothing to do with it at all. The early morning of April the 14th, 1865, when Lincoln was shot, Booth met with James Donaldson, then writes a confession article to the Washington newspaper. The article was destroyed, so he wrote the confession in his diary, and the diary pages were destroyed. So <clears throat> here it is on the 14th. Booth writes an article for the paper that's going to clear his name, shoots the president, runs down here to South Maryland, and sits for eight days. Doesn't run, doesn't have an escape plan. He just sits there, and he's reading the paper, looking for his article, and he can't find it. It, it, it doesn't come out, and the, he thinks the government is withholding it. It's a little that he left behind to clear his name. And, and so then he gets run out of Dense Meadow, and instead of getting in the boat and going downriver to Virginia, he goes upriver west to, uh, to a new hiding place. This is a, a friend of David Hurl's. They bird hunted together. And, and so he's still waiting. He's still holding out hope that these guys will come forward. Uh, that's what the letter was for, is his guarantee so they wouldn't double-cross him. He didn't realize that the, one of the guys he gave a letter to was one of the double-crossers. So he's, he's standing here eight days after shooting Lincoln on the north bank of the Potomac River looking south, and he writes in his diary that he has a greater mind to return to Washington and clear his name, which he feels he can do. <laughs> How clear himself? By disclosing his accomplices? Yes, that's exactly what he was talking about. But then he says, all is lost. He realizes they're not coming forward. So then that's when he gets in a boat. He goes down river, goes to Virginia, and the whole time, uh, Baker and Stanton and all the spies, they have complete control over all the information coming in. Baker, he sends his 26 soldiers down there because he's after the reward money. And uh, they surround the barn and Everton Conjure shoots Booth. It wasn't Boston Corbett and that's, that's proven. They still stick to that. But Everton Conjure was told, do not bring Booth back to Washington alive because if they did and he went on trial, all this would have come out. So they had to kill him. And so um, Conjure takes Booth the diary, and he catches a boat here at Bell's Plain, a steamboat, and he takes an eight-hour boat ride back up to Washington. And during that trip, he copies the diary, and several people read it. Uh, and Stanton finds out about it, and he confiscates the diary from him, and he destroys the copy. And nobody ever mentions it for two years, and until Baker gets in a fight with Stanton and he brings it up and then Congress subpoenas the diary and they examine it and they have this suspicion but they don't have any proof and then 1977 is all solved. The whole thing's over. Uh, nobody's ever announced it. So that's the rest of the story. It's, 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 all, it's all over. So I'm not on the offense, uh, defense here. I'm on the offense. I don't have to defend myself. Uh, because the FBI forensic report reversed the burden of proof. Any person now claiming that the text in Booth's diary is his original untampered writing must first explain how impressions from Booth's last page could appear on three pages which are in front of the last page of his text. That could only be possible if the pages now in the book had been unbound and loosely out of sequence when they were written. The FBI report states that the diary pages were in fact unbound after Booth was dead and rebound before Congress was allowed to review the book's now altered pages. It can now be proven that the Judge Advocate General for the conspiracy trial, Joseph Holt, lied to Congress when he testified that Booth's diary was not spoilated. The entire mainstream history about Lincoln's assassination is a fabricated story handed down by Edwin Stanton and his War Department conspirators. Who spoilated that book? Judge Advocate General Joseph Holt lied to Congress about the missing pages. The War Department destroyed Booth's confession, which he believed would clear his name.
It was a diabolical plot by a, a lot of powerful people, um, a lot of people that knew the story. Or, nobody knew the whole story, but they knew little parts of it. And who do you tell? I mean, what difference does it make? And then, then it all just fades away because it's just like me in this book. I, who do I tell? I got you people here today, but uh, I published this in 2013. And everybody that read it was waiting for somebody on the news to come out and say, hey, look, he's done. And they die, and they're not going to do it. Why the resistance? Because I'm the only one to profit from this. They've already got their story. All of them have written this story. And it's not this story. And this story makes every one of those books in Ford's Theater obsolete. Publishing companies uh, don't have this book. I published this myself because they wouldn't publish me. And I wrote it myself because I couldn't get any scholars to write it. Uh, because they would lose their job. Um, they, they would... They wouldn't be head of a history department. They wouldn't get published again. If, if, if they said that uh, the, uh, the men on the cover of this book killed Lincoln, no, uh, we're not going to change our history like that. Uh, so I had to do it like this. I'm the only guy who could have done it. I came in under the radar.